and gentlemen, please welcome Taylor Williamson! It's not going to be that good. <laughs> Set your expectations lower. Um, hello, everybody. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Taylor. Um, I'm going to tell you guys some jokes. I hope you like them. Uh, please laugh. If you don't, it's very uncomfortable. Those are the rules. Um, here comes my first joke. Never give up on your dreams. <laughs> that was my first joke. No, but for reals though, you never know what's coming at you in life, okay? Like take me for example. A few years ago, nobody knew who I was, right? Now, I'm a more beloved comedian than Bill Cosby. <laughs> You get it? <laughs> We're having so much fun, you guys. We're having so much fun. Um, I'm a, a big time celebrity now. It's pretty exciting. Um, that's not the laughy part. Um, uh, there's different levels of big time celebrity. This is the level that I'm at. I was at the airport in Colorado, America. <laughs> And this stranger rushed up to me and she was like, oh my God, are you Taylor the Comedian? You're my favorite comedian. What are you doing here in Denver? And I was like, oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm so flattered. I'm performing at the comedy club tonight. You should come out to the show. And then she was like, tonight, ah, uh, uh, I wish I could go to my mom's birthday. Why was she born today? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. But listen, you're my favorite comedian. Next time you're in town, I'm gonna be at your show and bring all my friends. It's gonna be great. Take care. And then I was like, wait, 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 wait. Great news. I also have a show tomorrow. <laughs> And then she's like, tomorrow, ah, ah, I got my kids tomorrow. You know, I love them. Sometimes I wish I never had them, you know what I mean? <laughs> she's like, but listen, you're my favorite comedian of all time. Next time you're in town, I'm bringing all my friends. We're gonna sell out all the shows. They're gonna add extra shows. It's gonna be so, 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 so sold out. And then she walked away much quicker, so I had to run after her quicker. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. And I was like, I also have a show on Sunday. <laughs> and then she was like, stop following me. Security. <laughs> it's cool being a celebrity. You hang out with other celebrities. Um, one time I was right here in this comedy club. But this woman came up to me. I swear this is real life. She goes, hey, Taylor, that's so cool. You're on America's Got Talent. I was also on a reality show. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, what show were you on? And she goes, hoarders? <laughs> I don't know if you're familiar with the TV program Hoarders, but it's a show about filthy, disgusting people <laughs> who you'd prefer mention to you that they were on hoarders before you shake their hands <laughs> with your hands. I'll be honest though, as disgusted as I was, I was also impressed equally. Do you know how disgusting you have to be to be invited to be on Hoarders? <laughs> like, it's not like, you know, remember the end of Double Dare when it's like, if you want to be on Double Dare, send a self address stamped envelope to you. <laughs> they don't provide this on Hoarders. They find you, okay? <laughs> they hear about you. They smell about you. <laughs> they find you. This woman was probably sitting in her house one day. Then she heard her phone ring. She heard like the muffled phone ring noise, you know? <laughs> and then she went to where her phone usually is and then uh, her eight cats were on the phone. <laughs> they were like on the phone like, meow, 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 how are you? I'm a cat on a telephone. <laughs> That's not what I meant. That's funny though. That's, funny. That's not what I meant. Sorry, I got it. That's not what I meant. You know, she her, and they're eight cat, they're all on the phone, you know, and she's like, come on guys, get off the phone, we got two rings left, come on. Come on, why aren't you moving? And she's like, oh yeah, they died three years ago, I forgot. Because <laughs> I'm gross and weird, you know? I'm disgusting, I'm weird, you know? 
So then she scooped off all her dead cats. You know? And she was like, hello? And the guy's like, hi, this is Josh, the producer of Hoarders, the show where we take filthy, disgusting people and we showcase them for the whole world to see how filthy and disgusting they are. Is Barbara available? And she's like, speaking? And he's like, Barbara, I'm so glad we connected. I've been trying to call you for six months. You never answered the phone. And she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I have my dead cats. They were on the phone. <laughs> they were like on the phone, like, meow, meow, I'm a ghost cat. I'm in heaven. We go to heaven too. It's not just dogs. I'm a cat on the phone that's dead. I'm a ghost cat. But don't worry, don't worry. Um, they're in the trash now. It's not going to be a problem. <laughs> And he's like, no, 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 put them back. We'll use it for the show. We love it. This is great. I'm so glad we connected. I understand you've been collecting your toenails since 1972. And you categorize them by color. This man is so happy. We'd love to have you star in the next episode of Hoarders. Here's how the contract works. It'll air for the next 100 years. You'll be paid zero dollars. Everyone you know and love will disown you. And she's like, go on. You get the joke, you get the joke, okay, go ahead. You get the joke. You may have noticed other comedians, uh, they like to end their jokes with the crowd going, ha, 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 or going, ho, ho, ho. I like to end my jokes when the crowd's like, okay. Okay, we understand, okay, thank you. Next one now, thank you so much. Thank you kindly, but no more, don't thank you, but thank you, but no thank you. So most people say to me, Taylor, what's your style of comedy? Like, there's like rock and roll and there's like jazz, you know? Like, what's your style of comedy? Um, I guess I would say my style of comedy is, uh, you ever have a tube of toothpaste and you bought it a long time ago and it takes a long time to get the toothpaste out? You know, like, you're, say, you're, say you're in your bathroom, right? <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. Say you're in your bathroom. <laughs> And you're doing, you're, doing, you're doing the toothpaste. And then like your wife comes in the bathroom. She's like, hey, I'm, I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to get some toothpaste. Do you need anything else? You're like, no, nah, I, got, I got some. <laughs> There's plenty left in here. Thank you. I'm OK. But maybe, you know, and, uh, save your money. But thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> and she's like, your breath is disgusting. I haven't kissed you in four months. You're disgusting. You're gross. Your teeth are black. I'm going to give you some toothpaste. And then you're like, no, nah, I, I, got, I got some. I got some. That's my style of comedy. <laughs> So happy to be here with all of you tonight. So happy to be performing again. Um, that COVID thing uh, was not so much fun. Uh, did anyone here get coronavirus? It's a safe space. Anyone here get, ever get coronavirus? I tested positive about an hour ago. Um, I should, they told me I should tell you. They told me I should tell you. Um, <laughs> I. Uh, I got, I got COVID about a year ago. Here's what happened. Here's my COVID journey. I, I spent two years following all the rules. I sacrificed my mental health for my physical health and for the health of those around me. And then I went to go visit a place called Florida. <laughs> oh, Florida. Wonderful place if you've never been. Um, they're so nice, you guys, there, uh, that uh, when you leave, right before you get on the airplane, right before you get on the plane, they give you a goodie bag. And I'm a sucker for a goodie bag. And I was like, thank you so much. What's inside? Oh, 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 a bag full of COVID. You got me, Florida man. You got me, Florida man. Have you noticed after you test positive for COVID, you become a little bit Republican? <laughs> you poco Republican. I did the 10 day quarantine following the rules again. So lonely and miserable. <laughs> Terrible time. Don't recommend, I recommend it, but don't, it's not fun. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> don't take medical advice from me, but um, I didn't like it. But first person I make physical contact with in 10 days was this lady uh, inside CVS. This is the first words I hear in 10 days from a human being. She goes, Excuse me, sir, would you put your mask on, please? <laughs> I went full Republican rage, you guys. I was like, who are you kidding? This mask doesn't even do anything. I got COVID wearing this thing. This is virtue signaling. Look, I can blow right through it. 
Do you feel it? Move closer, you feel it. <laughs> Give me a candle, I'll blow out a candle right now. <laughs> Give me a birthday cake, I'll steal all your wishes right now, one blow. <laughs> Give me Dr. Fauci's birthday cake, I'll blow out 400 candles at the same time, he's very old, you get it. Go. <laughs> And get this, you guys. Oh, get this, you guys. Oh. My friend Brian called me up. He's like, hey, Taylor, guess what? You know, my boyfriend, Ethan, well, we're getting married. I'd love to have you come to our wedding. But just so you know, if you come to our wedding, you got to get vaccinated first. Oh. 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 I went full Republican rage, you guys. I was like, are you kidding me? Gay people are getting married now? What is happening to this country? Thanks, Obama. Wow. Wow. You're terrible people. I like you guys. I like you guys. You guys are cool. It's wild. They shut the gyms down here in Los Angeles. It was, it was like March of 2020 until May of 2021. It's so wild. That means I didn't go to the gym for 36 years. <laughs> Wow. wow. You ever wear your mask and then someone smiles at you while you're wearing your mask and then you smile back at them and then you're like, what are we doing here? We're just wasting wrinkles, you guys. Did you know when you smile, it creates wrinkles? I just heard about this, you guys. I can't be getting wrinkles. I'm an actor here in Hollywood. I'm still trying to get cast to play a high school student. <laughs> How dare you? I could play a high school student and you're gonna agree with me in 15 seconds. Hear me out, okay? Disney Channel show, okay? Disney Channel original series, okay? Teacher talking to her student in the front row, okay? Billy, you didn't do your homework again? If you don't do your homework, you're not gonna graduate. You know what's gonna happen if you don't graduate? You're gonna end up like that kid right behind you and it cuts to me like, uh, uh, <laughs> I could play a high school student. Thank you so much. <laughs> Call Hollywood.com. Right, the point is when I wear my mask, and someone's smiling, I don't wanna be rude. They're sending you love when they, when they smile at you, they're sending you love. I wanna send love back to them, but I don't wanna get wrinkles, so I figure out uh, what to do, and I'm so excited to share with all of you. What I do now is someone's smiling at me, and I'm wearing my mask, what I do is I smile back at them, but only with my eyes. So they get the love they need. They don't know I'm not smiling underneath. They get the love they need. I save my wrinkles, everyone's happy, right? I'm a genius, I agree. But here's what happened though. This morning I was walking my dog outside. This nice lady smiled at me, and uh, I smiled back at her like I trained myself to do, but I forgot I wasn't wearing my mask. Um, so I smiled at her like this and went. <laughs> and she was like, are you gonna kill me? I was like, lady, I'm smiling at you. What is wrong with you? I'm still trying not to get sick, you guys. Um, you know, the scientists say to stay safe, you gotta wash your hands while singing the happy birthday song twice. You know that? I'm so scared of getting COVID, you guys. When I wash my hands, I sing Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> the song is longer than the other ones. You had to be there, you had to be there. Um, I'm so happy to be performing again. I'm happy to be traveling again. I went to Japan. Um, if you've never been to Japan, you gotta go. Uh, delicious food, uh, beautiful sightseeing. A lot of Japanese people over there, but uh, besides that, um, you gotta go, gotta catch them all. You got to, you got to. Um, no, Japanese people are truly the kindest, most polite people I ever met in my entire life. Like, do you remember when you're little and you drew a drawing, then your mom would be like, oh my God, you're amazing. You're like Picasso, my little Picasso, wow. That's how everyone in Japan treated me anytime I spoke Japanese. I learned how to say, where's the bathroom? So I said, sumimasen, toile wa doko desu ka? Then they'll be like, 
Wow! Your Japanese is so good. Are you from Japan? Wow! They made me feel so good. It was like my parents never got divorced. It was amazing. <laughs> I studied Japanese as a kid and I was so excited to finally get to use it. Uh, I was in front of this restaurant in Tokyo and I was looking at the menu and it looked like it said fish but I wasn't sure so I wanted to make sure. So this Asian gentleman walked by and I stopped him and in perfect Japanese I said to him, excuse me, is this fish? I said, sumimasen, sore wa sakana desu ka? That's correct, just trust me. You know? <laughs> this guy stops, he looks at me in perfect English, he goes, I'm from Hong Kong, I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> I was like, lo siento, amigo. <laughs> the Japanese language is funny how it's structured compared to English. Like if I were to say in Japanese, I eat pizza, I would say, pizza o tabemasu, right? But if I were to say I don't eat pizza, I would say, pizza o tabemasu sen. So the whole language is basically, I eat pizza, not. <laughs> It's a whole language based on how I thought it was cool to talk in 1992. <laughs> I love hanging out with my mom. Not. <laughs> I love homework. Not. <laughs> you guys are a beautiful crowd. That's all. That's all. <laughs> Change the subject. Very sexy crowd. Very sexy crowd. Um, I was so excited to use my Japanese skills in Japan. I went to a ramen noodle restaurant in Kyoto. I went up to the ramen noodle chef guy, perfect Japanese. I said to him, please give me ramen noodles, no pork. I did it, I felt really good about myself. But then in Japanese, he was like, why no pork? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I was not prepared to have an argument in Japanese. <laughs> I didn't learn how to do this in my fourth grade after school learning program. <laughs> but I can do this, watch this. So then in perfect Japanese, I said to the Japanese ramen noodle chef guy, I said, I don't eat pork. <laughs> But then in Japanese, he was like, why? And I was like, good Lord. Um, but okay, I got this, watch this. So then in perfect Japanese, I said to the Japanese ramen noodle chef guy, I said, I don't like pork. But then in Japanese, he was like, but this is good. And I was like, oh my God, how do I say this in Japanese? Um, I know I say this, I was raised Jewish, so I have guilt issues associated with eating pork. <laughs> it's not kosher. And I like, I like to become a vegetarian one day, um, but adding animals to my diet is the opposite direction of where I'm trying to go <laughs> with the animals I put in my mouth. So I said the last sentence I noticed say in Japanese. I said, buta o kudasai, uh, which turns out means, please give me pork. <laughs> And I ate pork for the first time in my entire life, for reals. And you know what? It was really good. It was amazing. Jewish people were wrong. I don't know who came up with this kosher don't eat pork nonsense. Probably some Gentiles trying to hog all the pork from the Jews. Hey, Jacob, you don't eat those pork chops. You're going to piss off God. I got you. No worries. my impression of a shady Gentile. <laughs> um, what else? Um, 
I'm a uh, I'm Jewish. Um, I'm Jewish. Um, Jews, uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. <laughs> I feel like most of you aren't Jewish, but you're just like, okay, good for you, buddy. <laughs> um, I'm Jewish. Jews, uh, Jews were very powerful people, um, not physically, um, but the other way. I was trying to brainstorm who's the most powerful Jew of all time. We got, we got Jesus. Um, Drake, um, Whoopi Goldberg. Um, I figured out the most powerful Jew of all time, Magneto. Uh, for those of you who are stupid idiots, um, Magneto's the bad guy from X Men. That's cool. We got one Jewish comic book character making a super villain. Fine, I can deal with that. But why do they have to give him the most Jewish stereotypical power possible? His special abilities, he can attract metal things towards his body. <laughs> oh look, change. <laughs> Ooh, gold. <laughs> Chocolate coins, I love those. I agree with you, that joke is more accurate than funny at the end. Um, yeah, we get it. Magnus don't attract chocolate just because it's wrapped in foil. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. We get it. Ha ha ha. But listen, it's fun for me to do because it looks like I'm squishing a boob. <laughs> I think that's how you're supposed to squish a boob. Um, Never had any complaints. <laughs> I've also never squished a boob. Um, one time I said this on stage, and this lady in the front row, she's like, you need more thumb. <laughs> more thumb, really? Like that solves everything over here? That's what's missing here? More thumb? What lady on earth? wants this to happen to her boob, okay? You're such a wonderful crowd, and you just, you just make me smile. Um, people think I'm gay a lot, um, but I never get, um, hey, you gay? I'm just wondering. Never gotten that. Um, I always get, hey, you're gay, right? <laughs> and then I'm like, no, I'm not, but I think it's great people are. I just happen not to be, but what a beautiful thing to be. I just happen not to be what great people are, you know? <laughs> and they're like, come on, you're gay. <laughs> and I'm like, my bad, I had no idea this whole time. <laughs> no one told me, I wish someone told me, I didn't know. Everyone's in on this, even my mom. I went to go visit my mom and she was like, Taylor, you know, I really hope one day you settle down and meet a nice person. <laughs> Person. Person. I was like, Mom, don't you mean girl? And she said, whatever makes you happy, Taylor. <laughs> when your mom says to you, I hope you meet a nice person, that's her way of going, hey, you're gay, right? <laughs> When I was 12, I was one of those stupid kids who called things gay all the time. I'm not proud of myself, I didn't know any better. Like one time I said to my brother, you don't like the Lion King, you're gay. 
my mom being a good mom. She was like, Taylor, we don't talk of that in this household. We don't call things or people gay, no TV for two weeks. Well, guess what, you guys? Turns out my brother's gay. <laughs> So I was right. <laughs> he doesn't like Lion King and he's gay. I want my two weeks of no TV back. Right now. Right now. I don't care what people care. It's 2023, just be who you are. Who cares, you know? I was hanging out with a buddy of mine who's American Indian. One on his computer, naked dudes all over the place. He was like, I don't know what that happened. There's, there must be a virus. Never look at this stuff. Uh. I was like, dude, who cares? Just be who you are. I wish he would just come out of the cupboard already, you know? Like, why does it even matter? Be, be gone, you know? that's, that's a joke for people who read a book before. Um, I watched the movie. I don't read. Please don't spread it as well. Watch the movie. I watched it. Um, I'm pretty cool, though. I, um, I was at a bar talking to this girl. Things are going great. You know, I have a lot going for me, you know? And uh, I was talking to this girl for an hour, and I was like, oh my god, I never got your name. What was your name? And then she was like, Sharon. And I was like, oh no, that's my mom's name. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, uh. I was like, listen, Sharon, we're both mature adults here. We're probably gonna do some cool stuff later, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Just so you know, when we do that, I can't call you that, because that's gonna be weird for me, okay? Uh, so instead, I'm gonna have to call you mom. <laughs> that joke hurts me more than it hurts you. <laughs> I assure you. Um, no, but I'm pretty cool. I was at a... I was at a restaurant with this girl, things are going great, you know, I have a lot going for me, you know? And, uh, we had a great dinner time, everyone had a great time, and I was like, hey, I'd love to walk you to your car. And she was like, no, I'm good, thank you so much. And I was like, you're so sweet, I'm going the same direction as you, it's no trouble at all, thanks so much. And she was like, no, I'm good, thank you so much. And I was like, you're so sweet, it's kind of a dangerous neighborhood, I just wanna make sure you get to your car safe, I'm not gonna make a move on you unless you want me to, no big deal. And then she was like, eh. I had never heard that noise before. <laughs> uh, so I looked it up. Apparently, when a lady says to you, <laughs> that's your way of letting you know she would rather die <laughs> than spend another moment with you. <laughs> I was really hungry recently. And uh, I went to go buy a sandwich. And as I was leaving the sandwich store with my sandwich, I drove by a really sad guy with a sign that said, hungry. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do the right thing here. And I gave him my sandwich. And I felt really good about myself until I got home and I remembered why I bought my sandwich. <laughs> I'm not proud of myself, please don't tell anybody but I drove back to the guy. <laughs> and I was like, listen, sir, I'm really sorry, but I'm gonna need that sign. <laughs> and it was delicious. <laughs> I, I ate the sign, that's it. <laughs> the end of that, I ate the, the sign. Um, I went to Panera Bread. I hate Panera Bread. <laughs> I had a traumatizing experience at Panera Bread. I'm gonna tell all of you right now. I went to Panera Bread, I asked for a cup of chicken noodle soup to go. Seems like a reasonable thing to do in the United States of America. <laughs> Pay for my food. Lady goes in back, she comes back with a paper bag full of my food. I went to take a look inside to make sure everything was taken care of properly. Sometimes people make mistakes. I've made some in my life, no big deal. <laughs> Right before I could take a look inside the bag, she grabbed it from me, she stapled it shut. I was like, whoa, excuse me, I'm so sorry for questioning your service. Thank you for all that you've done for our country.
I drove home, sat on my couch, took out the bag, I unstapled the staple of trust. <laughs> I took a look inside. There's a cup of chicken noodle soup. Great. And a fork. I don't know if you've ever tried eating soup with a fork, but what happens is the soup part of the soup, it falls in between the fork parts of the fork, and then it dribbles all over your naked body. So many burns. So much pain. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably one of those weirdos who eats soup wearing a shirt. <laughs> Donald Duck style. <laughs> Donald Duck style is when you're wearing a shirt and then you're naked everywhere else. I don't know why you do that, but whatever, bro. Whatever. The point is, have I ever go back to Panera Bread and I see that woman behind the counter who gave me a fork for my chicken noodle soup, I'm gonna pick up a spoon and stab her. Look at my notes really quick. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna look at my notes really quick. So make sure you get the best jokes I have to offer. Let me see. Let's see. Let's see. I did the Bill Cosby joke. That was pretty big. Um, booty is in the eye of the butt holder. I was hanging out with, I was hanging out with a friend of mine and he was telling me how he can't wait to go to heaven so we can hang out with Jesus. And I was like, listen, Jesus loves you, sure. But he definitely doesn't want to hang out with you. <laughs> Hear me out, I'm not Jesus, you know, but I'm pretty cool myself. I do meet and greets all around the country. Okay. Sometimes people come up to me after their show. They're like, Taylor, I love you so much. And I'm like, I love you too, I really mean it. Thank you, have a great night. And then they're like, hey, what do you have to show? You wanna go, you wanna go hang out? You wanna go hang out? And I'm like, oh, thank you so much. But you know, I got a, I got a flight tomorrow, but thank you, but uh, I have a flight tomorrow, you know, but, but thank you so much, have a great night, you know? And they're like, come on, let's go, let's go for a drink. Let's go for one drink, let's go for one drink. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you're so, you're so I'm, I'm grateful, you know, but I, I got a flight tomorrow and I, I, I don't really drink. It's just, it just doesn't make sense, I gotta wait, yeah. And they're, and they're like, come on, so we'll drink. Someone drink a little bit of the drink. You should buy the drink. I'm like, take us to your show. You'll buy a little bit of the drink. You'll drink a little bit of the drink. We'll go and drink a little drink. We'll go and drink a little drink. And then I'm like, My point is, that's how Jesus feels about all of you. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for being such a wonderful crowd. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
against alcohol out there? I just want to let guys, I'm gonna let you guys know um, I've been clean, clean and sober for 17 years. <laughs> Thank you, I'll be 18 in June. You know, I just never had any desire to do drugs or drink or anything, you know? One uh, of my buddies, my, my friend John, he's like, dude, I just got a fake ID. I'm gonna, I was like, what are you gonna do with that? Uh, you know, buy cigarettes, beer. If I had a fake ID, I'd probably go boat. 